गुड इवनिंग यूर वॉचिंग लेफ्ट राइट एंड सेंटर आई एम नताशा जोग आर बिग फोकस दिस इवनिंग डेली हाई कोर्ट पुल्स आर प्राइवेट हॉस्पिटल कांट होल्ड पेशेंट हॉस्टेज फॉर अनपेड बिल्स has healthcare in india uh, become purely a business now that's the big question that we're looking at this evening a special panel coming up in just a few moments but first the context to this discussion the delhi high court this week has pulled up private hospitals saying they can't hold patients hostage for unpaid bills in a country where private healthcare is out of question for most many of course will give this a thumbs up but others are arguing running a hospital is a commercial activity not a charity so how can they recover their costs let me introduce my panel to you right away as we get ready to debate this uh, dr devi shetty i mean cardiac surgeon chairman and founder of narayan uh, health with us dr keshri nath reddy president public health foundation also joining us on this as is dr nand kumar jairam chairman and ceo columbia asia hospitals thanks all so much for taking our time to be with us dr shetty let me start by asking you there's no denying that this is perhaps a step that will benefit all those who just perhaps have just no option really but there are others who would argue that they are not running a charity like running a business is not running a charity and if patients are not going to pay for uh, the services that are given pay for uh, what the hospital does for them how is the hospital going to survive what would you say dr shetty you see the first of all holding the patients as a hostage for not paying the bill is a very rare occurrence it's a very very rare occurrence it is not a standard practice at all across the country but there are few hospitals uh, would have done this and uh, it would have come to the notice of the court and obviously uh, uh, they are questioned and they are warned uh as a doctor running hospitals i don't believe that a hospital has a right or the moral right mm. to hold the patient as a hostage it is unacceptable by any standards mm. this is my personal view and this is the view of most of the hospital owners i can vouch for it mm. okay that, that that's of course good to know and of course we're not talking about the big chains you're absolutely right this this is not the norm at all and it's not our case that it is but it does tend to happen and perhaps that's why the court has got into it dr uh, nanda kumar jairam come in here at this stage how do you see this debate unfolding we've had lots of people uh, you know over the last couple of days write to us to say that hospitals just have to recover their cost but at the same time healthcare in india and where it stands and how private healthcare is just unaffordable for lakhs and crores of indians is also a reality yes uh, i think we are looking at two different situations firstly should a patient remain in hospital because he's not paid the bill the answer is a clear no it does nobody any good it increases the hospital costs it increases the cost to the patient every additional day that he stays on okay. is an additional cost and as devi correctly pointed out it is illegal immoral and unethical hmm. and i don't believe we should practice this at all hmm. however there is a point to be noted and that is that today with the technology and the fact that private healthcare is the one that's delivering 70% of healthcare in this country mm. it does come at a cost mm. and if that cost is to be borne by the private healthcare person mm. then there should be some mechanism by which the private healthcare is not penalized for non payment of hospital bills mm -hmm. all of us understand that today it is nearly impossible for us to chase somebody and get payment and that is something that no hospital would like to do would be able to do and therefore a mechanism by which reimbursements occur in such situations appropriately and by the right people needs to be looked at okay fair enough dr reddy come in here at this stage you know it it doesn't happen only because they're not able to pay their dues we've also uh, by way of our research come across instances where there are uh, families questioning the procedures questioning the need for the procedures and therefore wanting to hold the payment back very difficult of course to say who's right and who's wrong as always there is a fair amount of gray in these situations what should be the step forward how do you recover use the point that dr jairam is making that healthcare does come at a cost especially you know in with, with all the technology that we have at our disposal today there are three aspects to this question firstly should a patient be held as a hostage i think 
I agree entirely that this is incorrect and not permissible either in terms of law or in terms of medical ethics. The second question is, how should the cost of care be determined, whether it's appropriate or not? That calls for standard management guidelines where the kind of procedures that ought to be performed for any condition, whether diagnostic or treatment procedures, should be clearly delineated by a consensus of current professional standards. Mm -hmm. And therefore, any unnecessary procedures or overbilling can easily be detected. Mm -hmm. But the third element is the recovery of the cost. Mm -hmm. Obviously, when even if there is a dispute, there are other legal mechanisms by which a hospital can pursue mm -hmm. the payment issue. They cannot just hold a patient against his or her wishes. Mm -hmm. But this fundamentally points to a flaw mm -hmm. in the way in which our healthcare financing is determined. Mm -hmm. If we had a properly designed universal health, co health coverage system in which prepaid funding uh, for healthcare with cashless transactions at the point of care are determined by a variety of healthcare financing mechanisms, mm -hmm. tax funded, social insurance, and even purchased private insurance, mm -hmm. all going through a single-payer mechanism, then these kind of disputes can be avoided. Okay. We have a laser fare system in which there is no order, and that's why we get these kind of disputes. Okay, fair enough. Dr. Devi Shetty, would you agree? I'd also, uh, just before you answer, I'd like to say that, you know, in a recent study covering 32 countries, uh, you know, a global network of firms provided audit and all of that uh, in, in this survey, and India was placed... Uh, in the bottom five in the transparency index in the healthcare system. What does this say to you, Dr. Shetty? Uh, you see, we are a country where our government spends just 1.1 percent of the GDP on healthcare. Mm -hmm. And uh, people are expected to buy healthcare. Mm. It, is a, uh, it is a scenario where whether they are underprivileged or whether they are rich, Pain is the same, uh, the heart problem or a cancer or whatever, whether rich or the uh, poor person, mm -hmm. the impact is the same. Mm -hmm. And unlike in the past, there are modern technologies available. Mm -hmm. So essentially, what we should really look at, either governments should increase the budgetary allocation for healthcare, mm -hmm. if that is not possible, uh, encourage uh, universal healthcare where there are vehicles for people to contribute. Like we have 900 million mobile phone subscribers mm -hmm. and they spend at least 200 rupees per month just to speak on the mobile phone. Mm -hmm. If we can collect 20 rupees from each mobile phone subscriber every month, mm -hmm. we can pay for the surgical treatment of entire 900 million people. It is possible. We have proven that with 5 rupees per month, mm -hmm. you can do any surgeries on human body. So it is possible. So okay. essentially, we have to look at innovative means of funding the cost of healthcare. And once this mechanism is in place, we can always dictate terms how the payment happens and how the treatment is carried out. All right. Today, it is a kind of a situation wherein people have to buy healthcare, and all the you know, along with this kind of a sale and buy, a lot of. Uh, uh, incidents happen which is not acceptable to buy all of us. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. You know, uh, one more question to you, Dr. Shetty, before I move on, which is, you know, you, you mentioned India's spending on healthcare as percentage of our GDP. We've been talking about this for years now, you know, on why we need to up our game on this, how good healthcare quality uh, healthcare is really unaffordable and out of the reach for most Indians. But successive governments have done precious little on this. Do you really see any signs of that changing? See, the, uh, before we increase the budgetary allocation, we need to look at the, uh, the, the skilled manpower. Mm. Our biggest problem, why healthcare is today becoming unmanageable, mm. is because of acute shortage of medical specialists. Mm. Today, healthcare is all about medical specialists. Mm. MBBS doctors can hardly contribute much to delivering healthcare because of the legal restrictions. Mm. So, Fortunately, now our government has taken a very tough stand in terms of encouraging medical education, 
uh, the, you are aware that a NEET has been launched so that there is a fairness in the system of uh, uh, selection for medical uh, education mm -hmm. and government has made a commitment to increase the number of PG seats All right. and these are the right steps what government has taken. Mm -hmm. So I am optimistic that things will be better. Okay, that's good to know. Do you share that optimism, Dr. Reddy? Do you believe that the story will change? We'll be perhaps one day uh, doing, you know, look, talking about how things have changed over the last few years and hopefully that day is not too far away, but there's little sign of that, wouldn't you agree? Well, the new national health policy that was unveiled just about a month ago mm -hmm. actually commits that we will increase public financing on healthcare to 2.5% of GDP mm -hmm. by year 2025 even though that may be slightly less than what is required mm -hmm. and maybe slightly longer than what it should take mm -hmm. nevertheless it's a step in the right direction mm -hmm. and we ought to see incremental increase in public financing in each annual budget from now on that's what i hope mm -hmm. secondly it's also very clear that the national health policy is recasting mm -hmm. the entire policy on the health workforce mm -hmm. talking both about non-physician healthcare providers at the front lines mm -hmm increasing the number of allied health professionals as well as the number of basic doctors and specialists. Mm -hmm. But we truly need to invest in building a stronger health system All right. with universal health coverage as the framework. Okay. Dr. Jairam, I'm coming at this point. You know, the one problem that keeps coming up is perhaps, for want of a better phrase, a trust deficit that seems to have built up. Look at what happened when there was an entire debate around stents. You had most people, you know, already convinced that they had been overcharged without really going into the details of it and saying that, you know, they had spent X amount without again going into whether they'd got the latest generation or not. So there seems to be really a trust deficit as far as healthcare is concerned. How are we going to bridge that? Firstly, I think the trust, trust deficit exists and is a more recent phenomenon. Mm -hmm. And you will recall, at least if you're old enough, <laughs> that 20 years back, this did not exist. And the reason for this, I think, stems from the following facts. One, we have technology which has increased the cost at which healthcare is delivered mm -hmm. substantially in this country. Mm -hmm. Two, the fact that transparency is lacking in certain and I repeat certain mm. healthcare institutions mm. and the lack of transparency mm. not only in terms of financing but also in the way that healthcare is delivered mm. results in the lack of trust sure. trust can be definitely brought back mm. and for that we require the following mm. we require transparency and a code of ethics that will define it we require that communication between the patient, the hospital, and the doctor increases to the level. And today's healthcare provider and patient understand that they are in a different world. The patient is definitely knowledgeable about his problem All right. and the options that he has. Mm. And sometimes the, the knowledge is not really appropriate. Whatever it may be, communicating clearly with the patient okay. about the options he has for the treatment, okay. the kind of treatment that will be provided mm -hmm. is the only way mm -hmm. that this trust deficit can come down. And believe me, closing the gap that the trust has currently or the, the lack of trust that exists mm -hmm. will go a long way, not only in alleviating some of the mm -hmm. problems of finance, but in my opinion, the violence that has now crept into and unfortunately at that, the healthcare system of this country.